Shri Atul Bihari Bhatnagar ji, director, board member, San Moksha, to please join us here. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be in an open auditorium after facing the Zoom screens for so long. So um, I'm really happy and thanks for inviting me. Um, you know, the, uh, you mentioned about the triple helix. I think we are here triple helix because you're from research. There can't be a better person from industry as Dilip Chanoy, and I can represent the academia. Um, and uh, it's very important that, as you said, how the three coordinate with each other. Um, now, STEM, I would rather use that word E. Instead of engineering, I would rather make it entrepreneurship. Because engineering has to lead to something. Engineers are supposed to be job creators, not job takers themselves. Engineers have to think in those terms. And I'm being an engineer myself, and I'm a culprit that I did not create jobs, but now I'm trying to support that particular thought process. And for to be able to create jobs, you have to be a problem solver. And along with that STEM, there's a word A should come in, which is actually STEAM. And STEAM means the A is for arts. Now, why I say arts is because we, as technologists, get so absorbed in the technology that we don't know whether that particular product or service is going to appeal to people at all or not. And if it's not being appealing to people, then it's no use, really, very frankly. I mean, it can go for research. I mean, with, with, there are research papers. And we have challenged our own. And if you see some of the uh, colleges that are ranked, um, I'm from IIT Kanpur. And we have gone ahead and really bullied our director, really. Say, why are you terming the performance of IIT on the basis of papers that are published? And you see for that, UGC, or in, whether it's IIT or even MIT or any place abroad, if the Indian institutions are being ranked low because their research papers are not cited as many places, how many of those research papers are gathering dust? A lot of them. You'll find a full room. How many of them have really turned into a product or a service? Very little. We would rather have those papers come into doing something useful for the society, something useful for the environment. Otherwise, in the current day and age, everybody's into modeling. Somebody says AI, I, and that's the latest thing. Those 10 technologies, they go in the same way. IoT, AI, ML, DL, everything. They, they talk about everything together. Where's the data? I somehow challenge them. Where is the data? I mean, you saying artificial intelligence first, your intelligence has to be made into artificial on the basis of data. Where's the data? And you're using it in one single sentence, all of these technologies. So I, I feel very bad that this is not catching on. We are using terms very frivolously, not trying to understand the application of that. And robotics itself is such a major term now. We are now talking of robots, which are, I mean, not, we are no longer talking of industrial robots. We are talking of bots. We are talking of cobots. So tomorrow, I mean, when I say tomorrow, the very near future tomorrow, you might find um, on this panel itself, there might be a robot which has come to talk to us. And we will be sitting next to them. So it can be a co-panelist, can be a co-worker, can be any. And how do you manage that robot? You need the human element. Where does the human element come from? Psychology being one of them. Behavioral sciences being another. That's why arts are important. And the reason I say, stress on arts is, I mean, I was in IIT Kanpur. We got out with all the, uh, I mean, STEM to the nth level we were taught. Um, but we didn't know much about arts. And I happened to then go to, I'm Calcutta, and I got very depressed there because every question, you know, you have to write something with analyzing some eight psychology theories, et cetera, and each uh, question would run into some six, seven pages. I was not used to writing so much. You know, I, I'm used to doing a maths problem. Within a page or two, the answer comes, and everybody agrees to that answer. And in a psychology theory thing, nobody agrees to any answer, you know. It all depends on how the question has been formulated. So it used to be very, very difficult. But when I got out of it, I realized, and if I were to be reborn again, I'll do arts first and then get into technology. So I think this is the other way around that we have to work with, because we have to get the human values into whatever technology and whatever um, academy that we are supporting. 
in today's discussion being on, uh, on STEM, we have to include that bit into our curriculum. Now, now simple things like when you talk of technology, it's, I mean, when you talk of even sciences, I mean, there are a lot of ladies out here who, and even maybe we dal chawal banana hai. So, but when you boil dal in a cooker, you put it on the pressure cooker and you put it on the fire. Pali CT ke baad, the steam has built up. That means the surface tension of that water has been broken. At that 100 degrees centigrade, water is now coming ste uh, steam. So, why don't you reduce the pressure of the, uh, of the gas flame? Why don't you do because once that thing is built up, it will steam will keep boiling. So why do you have the fire at the full place? It's a very simple technique to save gas at home. Every single day, do it. Application of science to a thing in, in, in your kitchen. It makes sense. It tells you why you're doing what you're doing, what's the scientific principle behind it. And suddenly that very concept becomes knowledge for you. Same things when you leave your, let's say, your mobile charger and you've got a three-plug thing and it's got the small red light there, you keep it on. How much of electricity are you using? Maybe very minuscule, but can you calculate that? That's very important, just to understand what, what is happening there. So these are very, very small problems. If, the, if the, even the teacher in class says, okay, can you calculate and tell me how much electricity have you used or misused or wasted and, and at home, the, the child becomes aware of the environment. He, he understands what electricity is all about. He understands what wastage is all about. So these are very simple applications which the child can carry home and do something about it. And that will lead to knowledge uh, gaining, not about getting a degree. Now, when it comes to degrees, I am, I mean, even though I'm a product of higher education, and I've got those, let's say, the premium degrees that have this status, uh, gives you a status symbol in society, but I'm not convinced about those. I'm not. Um, and I'm telling my own children not to be really pursuing this MBAs and BTECs and the MTECs and the PhD for also matter. I don't care. What I care for is the, the skill behind it. And and again, uh, this can be better absorbed by the ladies again. When you see on your BBC, make my home, and you know, you, they demolish one home, and within five days, they construct a new one. And there are these plumbers and there's carpenters who come with cargo pants with tools coming all around it. You know, my wife used to drool after those guys, and I said, okay, hello, I mean, these are plumbers and carpenters, and I've got an IIT degree, and you don't respect me that much. But anyway, the, it's the skill. I mean, it's the skilling that requires respect in India. That is primarily, we are so focused on education and the degrees that we measure only, for, only those two things. And I get very, let's say, upset when I still see that the skill and education are being mentioned in the same word. They're not. They're absolutely not. Because I, um, I'll give you my example. I mean, my, I was in the last of the, uh, five year batch of um, BTEC. I'm um, talking of 1980 85. That time, IIT was five years of BTEC. Um, now it's four years. Now, some of that has come into NEP, which I'm happy, but I don't know how they're going to implement it. But let's say I, I'm a mechanical engineer, BTEC degree mechanical. Now, at the end of first year, if I had become a machinist, it's a nice rounded profession. Second year, I become a CNC machinist, computer numerically controlled. Third year, I become a machine designer. Fourth year, I become a robotics engineer because robotics was my passion at that time. And fifth year, I get my BTEC degree. Now, even if a third year, if I come out to my IIT, I have a machine designing experience from IIT Kanpur. Hell of a lot of value. I do some work in the industry, go back in and get my fourth year, then I come out again. NEP is allowing that. But NEP is just saying, no, no, hold on. You will get a diploma, then you get a degree, and you get a certificate, and you get something else, or whatever. So some, some gradation of paper. You know, the, what is more important is, at any point in time when you're coming out, what is the, I would say, the job role that you can perform? Yeah? And for that job role, that particular um, profession, or you, you can be a machine designer for the rest of your life, doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is, 
the day you get out and join a particular organization, you can add value to your employer. So the summation of skills is education, not education in total. Whereas here in the fifth year, if I don't appear for the last exam on the last day, and or if I fail that one exam, I don't get my degree. So either you are at class 12, or you are at class, the last day, last exam that you have to pass. In between, there is nothing. It's like KBC ka question, one crore ka question, get it wrong, get 2,500 rupees. So I mean, it's just, you just slipped past everything. So what are these top blacks in between? And I don't want to dictate in terms of degrees and uh, paper professions, but I want to like to say, it should be very related to what skill you're developing. And a case in point is South Korea right now. Basically in 1980s, you try and remember a single product from South Korea. You may not. And today there is one either in your pocket or at home. Why has that happened? Because 95% of the people in South Korea are certified skill. The word is certified skill. You know exactly how many plumbers and how many carpenters and what kind of plumber. And plumbing is not just the guy who comes and fixes your pipes and your home. The underwater plumbing also. The guy who works into oil rigs and creates that web of network by which you can take out oil from there. So they have very complications, a complicated type of uh, uh, stuff also that's happening. Now, if South Korea can do it, why can't we? Because our percentage is less than five. We don't know who's certified, and we don't know to what extent the guy's certified. Government being the biggest employer is still advertising in terms of, you know, want a 10th pass PN. Up to when 10th pass means even the PhD applies for a 10th pass. But the PN's skills are quite, in fact, very frankly, I'm also quite jealous because he, he or she is supposed to regulate the traffic to whoever she would be assigned to, means people coming in, knows how to archive, knows how to retrieve. I'm very bad at that. And a number of other things that is told to a PN. Now, how can a PhD guy satisfy that? How can an MBA do that? Unless the person is trained and skilled in that particular profession, you cannot complete that role. So going back to what the skills uh, movement, and I, I mean, I, I'm there speaking in front of Dilip, he's a skill man of India, so I would rather not do that. But I'm saying in terms of STEM, we have to put in the skill element, and we have to put in the arts element into it. Only then can STEM be really achieving what it was supposed to, and I do hope it achieves. I'm, uh, I have no reason why it should not. So that when you create a robot, and you create a robot, you should be able to program it like, like say, the robot is supposed to work for your nana and nani, correct? Na so when it talks to the nana, it talks about current affairs, talks about cricket and sports and the famous news channels and all. And when it talks to nani, it talks about shopping and the, uh, whether uh, Langda Arm is cheaper on Blinkit or in Flipkart or in Amazon so that she can order that properly. And the two old people who can be handled, their moods are different. Who's going to program that? So you've got a very fancy robot. You can say AI is there and it can do multi-language translation, etc. It doesn't appeal to the people. You have to make it like as if it's their baby. Only then that robot, home robot, will really be appreciated. So we have to make that happen. And to make that happen, you have to understand human behavior. And human behavior can be best understood when you put it in a holistic form with the technology. Thank you very much.